You're watching the community MMA. What up, what up? This your boy Chris Cross checking in. This is the community MMA. Welcome to today's podcast. We got a lot to talk about. First and foremost, I can't go past this topic. We got to get into it first because you know how we feel about Hamza, right? And rumors are beginning to swirl. And that's all we got now, nowadays, really, is rumors and speculation around Hamza Chamayev. And the rumor is that he's fighting Usman. It's resurfacing. Hamza saying in a recent interview, he's 90% sure that he's fighting Usman at UFC 294. And this coming despite Dana White saying the rumors are BS, right? We've heard Dana White say this on several occasions, but Hamza still remains <clears throat> confident that he's going to fight Usman. He, says, uh, he said in a recent interview, uh, we train as usual here in Stockholm. We were in Dubai for training camp, but came back now. Then a month before the match, we will go to Abu Dhabi. But otherwise, we train as usual here in Stockholm. We are ready for the match. It could be Usman, 90%. And, you know, people are are going crazy. They want to see Hamza return to the octagon. Hamza Chimev! And, you know, the longer and longer we wait, people continue... Uh, to be upset they're mad about him waiting so long to fight everybody's upset i mean it's been like a year right two minutes in the octagon we've talked about this two minutes in the octagon in well over a year now everybody's upset and all we can do is continue to wait and wait and wait oh my god bro and that's probably what you're saying in your head oh my god bro what is taking so long but then when a fight is finally announced, people are going to go bananas. Yes! Yes! And I'm going to be the first one on. I'm going to be the first one to hit record. First one to hit play when a fight is announced. Because I, at this point, I really don't care who the fight is against. I really don't care who the fight's against. It could be against anybody. Dana White privilege. And it seems like some fighters get to fight four or five times a year. And some fighters like Hamza never get to fight dana white privilege yep it's all about that dwp if you're on the good side you get to fight if not you don't and dana white is correct in saying we got to offer fighters three fights a year but what fights are hamza getting offered and does it change things where he's having visa issues do they still got to offer him three fights that he can't really accept like could they say hey you're gonna fight in new york against uzman knowing it can't happen and does that count as one of the three uh, potential fights so they could be giving hamza the runaround hamza much like a mcgregor and other fighters knows how to use social media knows how to use the news knows how to get people chomping at the bit to see him fight and it's become quite the spectacle because i don't think any of us have a clue do i believe he's fighting um uh, uzman no i can't say that i do if Dana White is saying it's BS, it probably is because the fighters will lead you to believe one thing. They're trying to get uh, news. They're trying to get attention on themselves. Hamza is no different. He's my favorite fighter, right? Number one on the do list. But at the same time, it's hard to believe uh, what these fighters say. I mean, you can't believe what they say. Boom! I mean, it is what it is. You just cannot believe anything that they say. Boom! And that includes... Hamza. Last night it went down, man. It went down. Team McGregor uh, is falling apart. And you see the three lines through the name, or five lines through the names. Nate Jennerman lost. Trevor Wells lost. All the way down to Carlos Vera lost. McGregor's 0 5. And we know there's a scuffle uh, coming in the octagon between McGregor and Chandler. And I have a feeling it's going to be next week because if Lee Hammond goes down, the number one lightweight contender. That's what would lead you to believe that there's going to be a scuffle. Because if Chandler loses one, he, you know, he lost one out of six. If this happens next week, no big deal. But if McGregor goes down 0-6 and it's apparent that he's going to get embarrassed because his last two fighters are the fourth-ranked contenders, this is really his last chance to get a win. I mean, it's very likely. I mean, very likely. I mean, the odds will be in favor of Team McGregor losing all eight fights. If he's going to win next week, it's with the number one lightweight contender, uh, at least picked by the coaches in Lee Hammond. 
but you still got a very good prospect uh, against a low-level average former UFC fighter in Kurt Holliball because Chandler's got the veterans. So th this is what you're facing. And I'm led to believe that McGregor's fighter Lee Hammond is going to lose, and that's going to lead uh, to a potential, not potential, but an altercation that we just know uh, is coming. I mean, if McGregor's going to get eliminated and really off the show, sort of, uh, there's going to be some fireworks on the way out. It's like someone getting fired when they didn't expect it. You're doing a good job at work. You know, he's training a guy. He's doing a good job. You're at work. You're doing a great job. You get called into the office and they're like, hey, you're fired. For McGregor, hey, you're off the show. And totally blindsided. I mean, McGregor, all the hype coming into this thing is going to go 0-8. I mean, that's crazy, man. That's crazy talk. And McGregor's not the type of guy that's going to handle uh, this type of stuff very well. I'm just here to tell you. In other news, Elon Musk is saying, at least it's being reported, that he's agreed to train with Georgia St. Pierre ahead of a fight with Mark Zuckerberg. So it's seeming, you know, regardless of what all of you are saying in the comments, is these billionaires are not going to fight, it's not going to happen. This thing is still being pumped up. Now we know that's what the news media uh, itself does, right? They're, they're going to pump up something that may never happen. They're going to pump up Hamza and Usman, fight may never happen. They'll lead you to believe it's going to happen. People are looking to get views. They're, they're saying and writing anything. But this is what's being reported is that he's going to train uh, with GSP, a.k.a. Georges St. Pierre, former great, I mean, great UFC fighter. If you're going to train with someone, that's the guy to train with. But the problem is, is how quickly can Elon Musk catch up when we know Mark Zuckerberg is training MMA? And we've discussed this time and time again. I still think Mark Zuckerberg would take out Elon Musk, and I still think these guys never... Uh, get into the octagon. I mean, that would be a bad uh, decision for your boy, Elon Musk, uh, to agree to. It would just be a bad decision. No doubt about it. But, hey, if they agree and they get in there, then let's do it, man. I'm willing to watch. How about you? So let's get into some more predictions from UFC Vegas 76 going down this weekend. You know, we've gotten three out of the way, but these are some of the three fights. And I'm just going to tell you now, th this could be a rough weekend for us or it could be a great weekend. Because even today's best bets uh, in the UFC for this weekend, I'm still not sure on any of the three. I'll just be honest with you. I mean, one is a six and a half to one favorite, and I'm not so sure he wins the fight. That's how good this card is going to be. But let's begin with uh, Bruno Ferreira versus Nurselton, newcomer. Great record. Check this out. In the middleweight division at UFC Vegas 76, you got Bruno Ferreira taking on Nurselton, Ruzi Boet. Now, Ferreira, Brazilian, comes in at a perfect 10 0. Nurselton comes in with an extensive career as a professional, 34 and 8, and hasn't lost uh, since, I believe, 2019. We'll get into that in a minute. Now, Nurselton. Four inches taller at 6'2". Both guys right around the age of 30. Ferreira, 72-inch reach. They both fight right-handed. Now, Ferreira in just two quick UFC fights, both wins by KO. Lands 6.6 .6 significant strikes per minute. Uh, no need for takedowns as of yet and hasn't given up any takedowns. Now, he's beaten Gregory Robocop Rodriguez by KO. And he won the Contender Series by first round KO. So, he's looking good so far. But... It's going to be an interesting test for Nurselton, a.k.a. Black, because he's got 20 submissions. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. 12 KOs, so 32 finishes and 34 fights. And again, the guy's won eight straight, hasn't lost since December of 2019. So a long history uh, of fighting. And what makes it, these are always the toughest predictions because, you know, you don't have enough fights from Ferreira to really know how good the 10-0 record is. Nurselton's got a long career, but he's untested really at uh, the UFC level. Uh, he's fighting at a Brave CF. He's fighting at a OFC uh, a couple of times, Octagon promotion and U1. So, you know, the question really is who's he fighting? Uh, not the level of UFC fighters, 
but that doesn't always mean very much as we've seen a lot of newcomers this year have beaten uh, UFC fighters and Fadeda's not really a UFC veteran but I'm still going to lean towards Fadeda to get the win I think he's going to defend the takedowns well maybe one round he gets controlled a little bit but he's going to win in significant strikes and the other two should it go to a decision but I like to see him get the finish that remains to be seen but I'm leaning with Bruno Fadeda to continue the unbeaten streak the only question mark here too is that he's young but I still think he wins this thing hopefully by KO finish to move to 11-0 middleweight division UFC Vegas 76. Yeah, forget all the accolades and stuff for Nurselton. I'm sure he's a good fighter. I'm sure there's going to be some of you in the comments that are like, "What are you talking about? You don't know, don't know about Ruzi Boev. You don't know what Nurselton's done. You don't look stuff up." Yeah, I look stuff up, but I'm not going against the undefeated Brazilian fighter in Bruno Ferreira. He might go. He might go down. He might go down. But I'm still standing behind the prediction. I think he's going to get the job done, in my opinion. We'll have to wait and see. But that's going to be a big fight in the main card. Now, in the next fight, you got uh, Kevin Lee versus Renat Akradinov. And Kevin Lee's already highly upset in his UFC return. He's got a fight at the Apex. In fact, just hours ago saying, you know, it's stupid that he's got a fight at the Apex. I mean, it's kind of true. You don't really have that many fans. You might get a couple hundred more of an intimate environment live there. We're still watching on TV, but it's not like a UFC Jacksonville when you got 20,000 people in attendance. You just got a few hundred. So Kevin Lee is not happy about it, but that do doesn't really matter, right? You still got to get in there and fight. It's a smaller octagon. And Kevin Lee has, you know, wrestled with both the lightweight and the welterweight divisions, mostly lightweight, but this is going to be a welterweight fight against a 20 and one fighter. Check this out. In the welterweight division at UFC Vegas 76, finally the return of Kevin Lee, who comes in as, at 19 and 7 as a professional, taking on Renat Fakradinov, who comes in at a nice 20 and 1. Think about that in 21 professional fights, he's only lost one time, and that was outside of the UFC. And in fact, he's a slight favorite here. Well, not even slight, 2 to 1 favorite. He's 3 inches taller at 6 feet tall. He's 31. Kevin Lee's still young, just 30 years old. Hard to believe. Kevin Lee, uh, three inch reach advantage, 77 to 74. Both guys stand right handed. Kevin Lee, 3.9 significant strikes per minute. Fakradinov, three significant strikes per minute. So close there, maybe about a 10 significant strike difference. But Renat will try to combat that with six takedowns over the course of three rounds or two takedowns per round. Kevin Lee lands uh, one. Now, Kevin Lee's got a 75% takedown defense, not bad. Uh, Renat so far uh, has. 100% takedown defense. He hasn't been taken down just yet. But digging deeper into the Motown Phenom, a.k.a. Kevin Lee, in his last few UFC fights, he lost four out of five. But all against good fighters, right? RDA, Charles Oliveira, Ally Aquinta, Daniel Rodriguez. He did have a lone win against Gregor Gillespie. So he's still capable uh, of winning. And he fought in the lightweight division for a long time. So we'll see what he can do if he beefs up here in the welterweight you would expect him to. Now, Renat, a.k.a. Gladiator, beat Brian Battle by decision. Seven takedowns, 43-3 to three, uh, in significant strikes, dominant. He also beat Andreas Michalidis by decision, five takedowns to none, 45-18 to 18 in significant strikes. And here's the deal. I don't care how good uh, of a defense that Kevin Lee has. He's not going to be able to stop Renat from at least getting three or four takedowns in this fight. And usually when a guy gets anywhere from three or five takedowns, they're pretty much guaranteed to win the fight unless Kevin Lee just dominates on the feet um, when he can stay there. But Renat's going to go for takedown after takedown and will likely control this fight uh, to move to 21-1. and one. In my opinion, Kevin Lee falls to 19-8, and eight, welterweight division, UFC Vegas, 76. Man, and I hate to go against Kevin Lee. That's, that's my dude. That's my guy. At one point, I said Kevin Lee couldn't run the table and get a – a lightweight title fight and then he ran into Charles Oliveira and other fighters RDA he did beat Gregor Gillespie but he what was he like one in four one in five over the final five or six fights that led to him being ousted from the UFC then he goes in a, another promotion and performs well and now he's back and unfortunately he's taken on a 20 and one fighter in Renat that's going to be tough business now Gurum Kudalata 
is on the card this week as well, taking on Elvis Brenner. People are still trying to figure out how Gurum beat Matush Gamra when he trailed by 15 significant strikes and trailed in takedowns five to none. I mean, how does that happen? How does that happen? It's like you get dominated in one round. I mean, dominated, and you sneak out two other rounds, and that's how they give you a split decision. People are still scratching their heads on that. And now he's a six and a half to one favorite. Very easily could be 0 and 2 in the UFC. I don't get it. But here's a prediction. In the lightweight division, one of the best divisions, if not the best division in the UFC, you got Gurum Kudalate comes in at 12 and 3, taking on Elvis Brenner, who you may not know much about, but he comes in at 14 and 3. Gurum, one inch taller, 5 of 11. He's 31. Brenner, 25 years old, still young. Brenner's got a one inch reach advantage. Both guys stand right handed. Brenner's got the advantage on the feet, roughly 4.8 significant strikes per minute to 3.8 for Gurum. Uh, but when you get into takedowns, both guys really non-existent in that category. Gurum, 77% takedown defense. Brenner, 70, uh, or excuse me, 100% takedown defense. He's only had one UFC fight, so take his stats with a grain of salt. Now, Gurum, a.k.a. the Georgian Viking, uh, lost his last fight to Demir Ismagulov, who's also on this card by split decision. 79-78 in significant strikes, very close. He did, however, get a win over Matush Gamra. Nobody knows how because he had five takedowns to none against Matush. Matush led. Uh, well, Matush had five takedowns compared to none for Gurum. And uh, Matush Gamra led 52 to 37 in significant strikes, still lost by split decision. Now, Brenner beat Zubaira Tukagov, a very good fighter who's 20 and 6. Beat him by split decision, even though he trailed by one significant strike, 70 to 69. So, pretty much. An even fight. So this is going to be one of those fights that's standing. It's going to be a very close fight. I don't know why they got Gurum as a six and a half to one favorite, especially when Brenner proved himself against Tukugov. Uh That seems like, you know, if you're going to look for uh, an underdog here that could pull this thing out with a, you know, low risk, high reward, that would be Elvis Brenner. But I can't go against Gurum in this thing. I mean, I don't like the way he's winning. Could very well or especially against Matush, he could very easily be 0-2, but he's not, he's 1-1. He finds a way to win fights, and even when he loses, it's very close. So two UFC fights, very close in the significant strike category. So I'm still going to lean uh, with Gurum Kudalate to win this fight, but he's definitely not a 6.5-1 to one favorite. With the win on significant strikes, he'll move to 13-3 and three over Elvis Brenner, who will fall to 14-4, and four, lightweight division, UFC Vegas 76. Yeah, that's a tough one as well, but we got to roll with Gurum. I mean, he's more proven. Uh, I mean, you know, his opponent did beat Tukugov, who's 20 and 6. I mean, that's uh, an incredible win. And that's why I don't know how Gurum's a six and a half to one favorite. This guy gets more credit than any other fighter, or the benefit of the doubt would be the better phrase. He gets the benefit of the doubt more than any other UFC fighter I've ever heard of and should not have won. He should be 0 2. But. You got to say, again, the guy finds a way to win fights, so it's hard to, to predict against him. That's the bottom line. So these are some of the best bets, including the other three predictions we did on the previous podcast. These are six guys I believe will win, but I'm not confident in any of them. I mean, really, you know, some fight cards, I'll tell you, like I'm real confident in this one. I'm not confident in any of the predictions because all the fights to me, you know, I'm making a prediction at the last second. It's tough to say which way it'll go, and we'll just have to wait and see, man. But luckily, we got enough wins uh, to have a bad night. We just don't want to have a bad night. You dig? For now, this your boy, Chris Cross. As always, hope you have a great day. God bless. Peace.